With high levels of inflation continuing to make everyday items more and more expensive in the UK and the cost of living crisis not looking like it's going to get better anytime soon, it's more important than ever to grow any savings that you have through investing, protecting it from the eroding impact of the double digit inflation that's currently wrecking havoc across the world right now. As someone that's worked within the finance space for over 10 years, I've become pretty familiar with the different methods that are available to people if they want to invest their cash and grow their wealth. But before I had this work experience, I didn't have a clue about what, when or how to invest. School didn't teach it and neither did my university. So even though I was keen to grow any savings that I had through investing, the fear of stepping out into the unknown, that stopped me from doing it altogether. So I kept my cash in a super low interest account and settled for being paid pennies every year instead. Now, the most annoying thing about doing that wasn't the fact that I missed out on a huge amount of the stock market's surge in growth, but it was that once I actually went through the process of investing my money, I realized that it isn't a complex process and it doesn't require large amounts for you to get started. In fact, you can make your first investment with just a hundred pounds and 20 minutes of your time. And once you've done it, you'll see how straightforward the process is and how quickly it can be done the next time around. To help ensure that you don't follow the same path of failing to invest like I did, seeing your savings dwindle in purchasing power as inflation continues to play havoc, I'm going to walk you through the process to follow in order to invest your first 100 pounds. And by doing that, I'm hoping that you'll see just how easy it actually is, which will encourage you to continue investing the same amount on a monthly basis, giving you the benefit of the power of compounding and allowing you to grow your savings much more quickly than if they were just sat in a low paying bank account. Before I do run through the steps to follow in order to invest your first 100 pounds, it is important to clarify that assessing the results of any investment, that should be done over a period of at least four years or more. Whilst we're obviously hoping that the value of our investment goes up substantial amounts in that period, because we're going to be investing in companies via the stock market, in shorter amounts of time, there could be periods of volatility caused by events such as recessions, wars, pandemics, and so on. And that could mean that the value of the companies that you invest in, they fall in value in the short term. And that's no matter how good their own individual performance is. So as a general rule of thumb, when you're investing any amount, it's to only invest sums that you're unlikely to need in the short term. If you're looking at buying a house or you need to pay off a large sum of debt in the next year or two, you're probably better off keeping that cash in an instant access bank account, regardless of the interest that it pays. So if you're able to save around hundred pounds a month and you're unlikely to need that cash in the short term, then stick around and get ready to learn how you can invest that cash through a platform known as Trading212. And as part of this tutorial, I'm also going to give you a couple of investment ideas that you can consider making yourself. Now, if you haven't heard of it before, Trading212 is a platform that allows you to invest straight into the stock markets without having to pay any commission. And the reason that I recommend it for beginners is that the website and app are both pretty intuitive to use. It offers over 10,000 stocks and funds for you to invest in, and it allows you to buy fractions of a share. So if you wanted to invest in Apple, for example, via most other brokers, you'd have to buy at least one share of the company, which according to the latest trading data would cost you $175. However, with Trading212, if you only had, say, $88 to invest, then that's not a problem because you could buy half a share in Apple instead, thanks to these fractional shares that are available to be bought. In short, Trading212 is my recommendation because it's beginner friendly and it allows you to get started with a small amount of cash. But if you do have another platform that you're already registered with or one that's been recommended to you, 
feel free to use that and still follow along with my recommendations in this video. If you're happy to go with Trading212, firstly, you're going to need to make an account. You can register using the link in the description of this video. And as soon as you make your first investment, you'll get a free share with up to a hundred pound credited straight into your account. Now the registration process itself is pretty straightforward. Click open an account, select the country that you're based in, and then select either the ISA account if you haven't already opened an ISA since April, or if you have, select the investment account. I'm not going to run through the details of what an ISA is in this video, but if you're not familiar with what one is, check out my last video on reducing your tax bill to get the detail. Once you've made your selection, fill out your email and your chosen password, and then complete the appropriate forms to verify your identity and make your first cash deposit. As soon as that's done, your account is active and you're able to invest your first £100 just as soon as you feel ready. Now, the Trading212 website is pretty straightforward to use. In the left-hand menu, you've got the watch list section, which contains lists of stocks and funds that either you or Trading212 has favorited. You've also got your investment portfolio section, the option to search for any investment that you want to make, the calendar, which contains upcoming key economic and financial events that may impact the value of your investments, as well as some training videos. An ETF or an exchange traded fund, in its simplest terms, is an investment that tracks the value of hundreds of different companies' share prices, the total movement of which impacts its own value. When you invest in a single ETF, you are indirectly investing in all of the underlying companies that sit within that fund, which can sometimes actually be in the thousands. And that potentially lowers your risk and your exposure to a single company or industry through the impact of diversification. If you are a complete beginner to investing, I would always recommend starting with an ETF. And that's because they're incredibly diversified, some more so than others, but generally speaking, they're always going to be more diversified than you just buying an individual stock. Their annual management fees are also very reasonable with some as low as 0.07% per year. Of course, you can consider investing into single companies as well, but be aware that the risk of doing so is higher. And because of that, it's highly recommended that you do a fair bit of research into the company that you're considering investing in before parting with your cash. Just to give you an example of what can happen if you don't do your research and pick a stinker, when I first created my investment account with Trading212 a few years ago, I got given a free share in a company called Smile Direct Club. And at the time that was valued at £14.63. Given it was free, I just left it there, didn't do any additional research, and I've only just checked the value of it today, the value of which is a healthy 57 pence. And that's because of continued underperformance. So if you're going to invest in single stocks, do your research and don't just invest everything into a single company. Spread the risk so that you're diversified. And if you don't have the time or the confidence to research into the hundreds of companies out there before you go ahead and invest, my advice is to stick with an ETF until you do. Once you've gotten familiar with the Trading212 website and you've had a look at the companies and funds that you can invest in, if you'd like to do some additional research into any of them, which I would recommend that you do, of course you can use Google, but for a quick start, click into any name where you're going to be shown historic price movements, a summary of the company and its financial performance, as well as important documents such as annual reports. If you're looking into an ETF, the document section is super important to view because it contains what is known as the key information document. And that contains detail of what type of companies the fund invests in, the deemed risk profile, 
as well as the annual fees that are charged. If you haven't seen one before, these documents can be a little overwhelming. So let's walk through an example together now so I can show you the key information that you need to look out for. So here we're going to select the Vanguard FTSE 100 ETF. And if we scroll down and open the key information document, we can see the name of the fund at the top, the currency that it trades in, as well as whether it's a distributing or accumulating fund. Distributing means that any dividends that are paid out by each individual company within that fund, they are paid out straight to you. And accumulating means that any dividends that are paid out are reinvested on your behalf automatically without you incurring any charges. So if you're investing for the long term and you're not close to retirement or looking for dividends, I would always look for the accumulating version of a fund that you want to invest in. Next up, you've got the objectives and the detail of the fund, and that will tell you the type of companies that you are indirectly investing in. Here we can see that this FTSE 100 fund, it invests in large sized company stocks within the UK, to be precise, the top 100. If you wanted to see the detail of which companies are included in your fund, simply copy and paste the name of the fund or the ISIN straight into Google and then click into the portfolio section of the fund manager's website that appears. Further down the document, you've got the fund's risk profile and that's usually going to be at the top end of the scale for any fund that invests in shares as well as information on fees and charges, which are automatically charged to your account by trading 212. And then finally, you've also got a section on past performance. Of course, these documents do contain lots of other information that you might be interested to read about, but it's going to be the name, type, pricing and strategy of the fund that you'll most be interested in whenever you come across a new one that you're not familiar with. So now that I've walked you through how to navigate the Trading212 website and the key information that you need to look out for, let's walk through how to actually invest and what to consider investing in if you are a beginner. And we'll start with the latter. If you've never invested before or you don't have the time to research individual companies to invest in, then as a beginner investor, my advice is to consider an ETF or exchange traded fund. By doing so, you get the immediate benefit of diversification through the fact that the ETF is indirectly invested in hundreds of companies. Additionally, the fees are low and it's effectively a passive investment. So you don't need to worry about keeping on top of an individual company's news and then considering whether you should be buying or selling more according to their financial performance. Don't be fooled into thinking that because a single company that you're considering is well known, that it's likely to do well and you don't need to do any research before buying. Just look at Tesla, for example. If you'd have put your cash in them a year ago without doing any research, you'd be down 20% on your investment today. And that is actually quite a substantial drop. So if you want to invest in individual firms, always do your research regardless of who the company is and try to diversify by investing in multiple companies and multiple industries as best you can. If you don't want the hassle of doing that extra research and you're happy with your investments effectively tracking the performance of an entire market, stick with an ETF. Assuming that you're happy to go down the ETF route for your first £100 investment, I recommend that you start to look at the following funds. The Vanguard FTSE All World Index, which is an incredibly diversified ETF that has over three and a half thousand companies within its portfolio. I would also consider the Vanguard S&P 500, which comprises of the top 500 biggest companies in the USA, so Amazon, Apple, Tesla, and so on. And if you're looking for exposure to the UK's listed companies and the UK economy, I'd also consider the Vanguard FTSE 100 and FTSE 250 ETFs. I myself invest pretty much exclusively into the FTSE All World Index. And that's because of how diversified it is from an industry and geographic perspective. But when doing your own research, you may prefer to have more exposure to the US, for example, which generally contains higher growth companies than other areas. And if that does sound like you, 
then the S&P 500 index might be more suitable for you to put a bit more money into. Regardless of which option or options you go for, as soon as you've made your mind up, click into the fund, press buy, select your investment size and then press send by order. If it's during the week and the markets are open, then your order should be executed immediately and you can give yourself a pat on the back because you've just made your very first investment. If you make your investment at the weekend or in the evenings when the markets are shut, don't worry because your order will be executed the first moment that the markets open. As mentioned earlier in the video, remember that investing should be seen as a medium to long-term activity. So whilst it's hard, try not to keep looking at the Trading212 app on an hourly basis and then making decisions based on daily performance. Just keep making regular investments if you can, ideally on a monthly basis, and if possible, invest into your ISA for tax-free returns. If you can follow that advice consistently, then you should see your wealth start to accumulate and grow much, much faster than if it was just sat in your bank account. So that's all there is to it. Hopefully you didn't find it too confusing and you now agree that investing isn't something to be frightened of. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or recommendations, let me know in the comments.